Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. In the Bitcoin news today, we're going to look at the Bitcoin stimulus checks. Are some people using their stimulus checks to invest in Bitcoin? The numbers are amazing. Also, USA versus China, who will launch its own digital cryptocurrency first? That'll be the first article that we take a look at. Then we're going to talk about insights from cryptocurrency sentiment during the COVID turmoil. We'll also look at should you store crypto on an exchange. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is the Bitcoin stimulus checks. So should I buy Bitcoin now or wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It makes a huge difference for our channel. So I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And that's really important to understand because anytime you're listening to anybody on, on the internet or YouTube or anywhere else, even though those articles or the information sounds really legitimate, that doesn't mean that that information is right for you to take action on. So always do your own research. Always look at all the information and weigh your personal situation with the decision you're about to make because we want you to make the best decision for your life and for your family. So right now in the cryptocurrency market, it is down. Bitcoin was trading at about 7,050, 7,150 earlier today and for a good part of yesterday. But right now it has dropped to $6,978. That's a, a drop of 2.6% in the last 24 hours. So just so that you know, right now is April 20th, 2020 at 7, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. So Bitcoin is going to face stronger global recession than in 2009. The IMF forecast shows and it's been updated. So the global economy is estimated to drop by 3% this year before rebounding by 5.8% in 2021. The International Monetary Fund said today, stressing that this crisis is like no other. So no kidding. Uh, the COVID-19 crisis is like nothing that I think we've ever seen in the history of the United States. And to the best of my knowledge, possibly even the history of the world. I'm not a history buff, so I couldn't say that for sure. Um, but from what I can recollect, I don't recall anything similar to it in world history. In the past 60 years, the global economy decreased only once, and that was in 2009 when Bitcoin started its journey. The global GDP slipped by 1.73%. This time, advanced economies such as the U.S., Euro areas, and others might see the strongest drop while the emerging markets and developing economies will probably suffer less and rebound faster, the IMF said in its latest World Economic Outlook published today. So the entire World Outlook there, we know what 2019 was. It was 2.9% and it was in the positive, but they're guessing about 2020. They're thinking it's going to be uh, in the negative by 3%. And then they're guessing about 2021 and thinking that it'll be a positive 5.8%. Um, but it looks like advanced countries are going to take it much worse than emerging markets. And so um, if you want, you can always pause the video and take a look at these numbers a little bit closer. Marcus Swanepoel, co-founder and CEO of crypto exchange Luno, warned recently that in the case of massive global recession, even the long-term hodlers may be forced to sell their Bitcoin just to survive. And so I'd hate to see that it gets that bad that people are selling their Bitcoin just to survive. It's hard to say where things are going to go. Hopefully you and your family are not leveraged to the point where you could be greatly at risk. The next bit of news, USA versus China, who will launch its own digital currency first? So talks about switching to digital money instead of fiat have been held for long. 
For some people, it is actually a way to minimize risk of infection, while others simply think digital payments are more convenient. As the interest in cryptocurrency among common folk is growing, countries are prompted to adjust to people's demands. As of now, there are a number of countries exploring the potential and possible frameworks for developing a central bank digital currency. France has been experimenting with the digital euro for cross-bank transactions. The Central Bank of Korea has announced a 20-month pilot testing of the digital won, W-O-N, for micropayments. Now, it seems time has come for the USA and China as they are one of the world's largest and most affected economies. On April 17th, two lawmakers, Pramila and Jaipal and Rashida Talib from the U.S. House of Representatives filed supplement to the package bill, which directly, directly stipulates creating digital wallets called Fed accounts as digital dollar account wallets. According to the bill, all government recipients must be given the alternative to make payments in a digital dollar wallet by January 1, 2021. And so just because that was added to the bill, it's yet to be seen whether or not it will get stricken from the bills, some of the bills that are pending in Congress at this time. And so, um, but here's the important point. Uh, We're starting to see a digital dollar get more and more attention by the U.S. government. There's also been uh, talks or hints from the Federal Reserve of a similar uh, trials, investigations, and so on that they've been looking into creating a central bank digital currency for quite a while. And so things could get quite interesting. Now, China, on the other hand, in its turn, has also been on the forefront of innovations. The People's Bank of China established the Research Institute of Digital Currency back in 2014. However, the work has been sped up after Facebook announced the launch of Libra. The coronavirus pandemic forced the country to accelerate in this direction. And so there's been a domino of events that has accelerated the People's Bank of China looking into a digital currency. When the number of infected people skyrocketed, China started talking about switching from fiat money to digital currencies completely as paper banknotes can be potential carriers of the disease. Later on, they refused this idea, having realized possible catastrophic consequences. However, the development of the digital yuan, Y-U-A-N, has continued. The local newspaper, China Star, has stated that the digital yawn might be launched as soon as May 2020. First, it will be set as a trial project and used for paying state employees. Coin Idol, a world blockchain news outlet, reported that WeChat Messenger has been virally spreading a CDBC app screenshot. The app has been launched by the Agricultural Bank of China as a beta test for four cities. So that beta test, we did a, 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 a video showing those digital screenshots for the Chinese central bank digital currency. So it's clear that they're moving, that they're making progress. And seeing a May 2020 uh, launch is awfully aggressive. But hey, who knows? I don't have detailed information about how far along they are with the Chinese central bank digital currency. So while May 2020 sounds incredibly aggressive to me, um, it may be realistic. Uh, without, a, without detailed information, it's very difficult to say how close they really are to launching. Now, I have not seen any uh, uh, external news other than this article that's mentioned a May 2020 launch. Um, So maybe that news is out there and I just haven't picked up on it yet. Uh, But until I start seeing it from more sources and especially sources out of China, I'm kind of leery as to whether or not this is an actual date because that's, you know, that's coming up in just uh, 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 about 10 days. And so I would have thought if it was happening in 10 days, it would have been everywhere. 
people everywhere would have known that in 10 days, the central bank of China is releasing their digital uh, cryptocurrency, the central bank digital currency. But hey, I could be wrong. Time will tell. Insights from cryptocurrency sentiment during the COVID-19 turmoil. So let's take a look at this. The first quarter of 2020 was characterized by market turmoil caused by the coronavirus pandemic. How did cryptocurrency sentiment fare during these tumultuous months? Crypto sentiment rating have been recently released by trading platform eToro using data from an analytics firm called The Tie. Both short-term and long-term sentiment was measured in their report. So as coronavirus uh, concerns emerged, Bitcoin became less correlated with the S&P 500 and more correlated with gold. In March, Bitcoin and gold were more highly correlated than any other correlations between the three asset classes. That suggests that Bitcoin as digital gold narrative is far from dead, as the report indicated. Over Q1, nearly all cryptocurrencies experienced highly correlated daily price movement with the exception of Dash. Every coin hit its highest quarterly price between February 3rd and February 19th. Every asset dropped to its low point on March 13th. However, for the first three months of 2020, digital asset returns varied drastically from a negative 22% to a positive 58%. Altcoin sentiment. The percentage of days during quarter one where altcoin sentiment was positive ranged from a peak of 67% for Stellar to lows of 45% for Ethereum Classic and Cardano. Altcoin sentiment levels during the period illustrates two things. First, Notwithstanding, testing and market conditions, investors appear to trend toward bullishness. Second, when adverse events occur, such as the Trinity wallet hack, positive sentiment falls sharply. Markets seem to be positive, but fickle. So I think that was, yeah, that was all I wanted to cover in this one. Um, and so, you know, ultimately, sentiment is still very, very bullish, even though we've had this entire COVID-19 and where everything crashed. And I think a lot of people understand that, hey, everything crashed, not just crypto and not just other things. Now, should you store crypto on an exchange? Keeping your precious Bitcoin on a crypto exchange may seem like a good idea if you plan on buying and selling crypto on the fly. But given the number of critical hacks in the space, an offline non-custodial wallet is far more secure. So there are various methods for storing cryptocurrency offline. Uh, cryptocurrency and offline wallets are the safest option. Traders taking short-term spot and derivatives positions tend to keep their funds on exchanges because they need access to it very, very quickly. A lot of traders just don't have time to wait for a cryptocurrency to move from a wallet to an exchange and then to make a purchase. Non-custodial exchanges eradicate the need to choose between safety and efficiency. And so that's very true. With a non-custodial wallet, or non-custodial exchanges, meaning the exchange does not require you to transfer your crypto to the exchange before you can buy and sell or trade. But instead, there are exchanges out there, such as Shapeshift and many others, where you can trade directly from your wallet for a specific cryptocurrency. And so you'll send your cryptocurrency to an address and then new cryptocurrency for whatever whatever type, you know, maybe you're trading uh, Bitcoin for a stable coin. Well, whatever the actual transaction is, you can do all of that in an offline wallet, a wallet that's not actually on an exchange. Your cryptocurrency is only safe as the method you use to store it. Exchanges are considered the least secure venue to store cryptocurrency, while offline wallets are the safest. But there's a trade-off between the ease of entering and exiting positions and the security of your holdings. There are two choices for a cryptocurrency investor when it comes to storing their crypto holdings, custodial 
or non-custodial. Now when users, and custodial means you've put it on an exchange, and non-custodial means you are the king of your crypto. When users store their holdings on a platform like an exchange, that is considered custodial. Users hand over their security measures to the exchange. You also have to rely on the fact that your uh, uh, password and user ID is in some cases all they need in order to get access to your cryptocurrency. Now, if you've set up two-factor authentication with your accounts on a different exchange, then they need that additional layer of information, the two-factor authentication, in order to get access to your wallet. So at that point, it becomes your user ID, your password, and then access to you know Google Authenticator or whatever Authenticator is, is being used by that exchange. But when a user holds their funds in a wallet that only they can access, it is a non-custodial and free from platform risks. So you're free from the risks of using an exchange. Both these methods have their merits and flaws. The best option varies for different types of investors. Non-custodial is more secure but inefficient as it takes time to deposit funds in a trading avenue and a trading opportunity could be missed. Custodied funds are subject to more risks such as hacks but offer better trading efficiency as funds are stored on an exchange. As a rule of thumb, long-term holdings should be stored in a non-custodial fashion. In other words, stored in your own hardware wallet. But for short-term traders with an open position, keeping it on an exchange is a smarter option. For non-custodial storage, offline wallets are the safest bet as they aren't connected to the internet and suspect susceptible to hacks. So when they say non-custodial offline wallets, there's a number of different kinds, but the one that's the most secure is definitely a hardware wallet such as a Trezor or Ledger or Keep Key. And there's, there's about 20 or 50 other hardware wallets out there. I'm familiar with those three because I've actually used all three of those. And so, um, and you might ask, well, which is my preference between a Trezor Ledger and a Keep Key? And really, it depends on what cryptocurrencies you're most interested in holding because each one holds a different list of cryptos. And so if you know what cryptos you want to hold yourself personally, then you'll want to make sure that those particular cryptos are available on that particular hardware wallet. If you don't have a specific uh, crypto that you really want to hold, then my recommendation is consider the Trezor wallet and use a software called Exodus to maintain your funds. That way, by logging into your Exodus wallet, which is a software you'll install on your computer, and then you plug your Trezor into your computer, and that gives you access to your funds. Um, it gives you one place to manage all of your cryptocurrencies, and by logging into the Exodus uh, wallet, you're able to see the balance for all of your different cryptocurrencies. So I kind of like that. Um, and if you're thinking about getting a hardware wallet, I think that's a good way to go. But again, this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. This is what I've at, uh, informed my friends and family to do when they're thinking about investing in cryptocurrency. I recommend to them that they get a Trezor and use the Exodus software. So hardware and paper wallets are offline storage methods offering the highest degree of security for custodial investors. Now let's talk about the stimulus checks. So nothing screams confidence in the U.S. Confident economy more than swapping Federal Reserve issued money for a digital hedge against the mainstream financial system. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong tweeted earlier on Friday that his exchange had experienced a sudden spike in the number of buys and deposits at the $1,200 value. So take a look at this chart. This chart starts back on January 1 of 2020 and you can see the number of people that are investing or sending $1,200 to Coinbase and then boom, all of a sudden there's this huge spike 
of people sending $1,200 or depositing $1,200 into a Coinbase account for the purpose of buying cryptocurrency. Of course, it's impossible to say for certain if all these deposits were U.S. citizens looking for a new home for their government-issued money. The graph doesn't specify what the split between buys and deposits were, so it's impossible so it's possible some customers have simply parked their money in the exchange. We can't tell if these deposits even came from the U.S. Investors aren't just heading over to Coinbase with their stimulus money. Speaking to Coindesk, a Binance U.S. spokesperson confirmed they had also seen a spike in $1,200 deposits. People do seem to have deposited exactly $1,200 in Binance U.S., in the past couple of days, the firm confirmed. Crypto prices took a hit when COVID-19 outbreak fears peaked in March, but it has since rebounded with interest rates at record lows and other assets like equities reporting lackluster returns. Some U.S. investors may see this as an opportunity to take uh, a new asset class, to invest in a new asset class. So, that is the news for today. How can I be of service to you? Leave comments below on the YouTube channel. We would love to hear from you. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.